All right, we're live. Here we go. Got another message. Good to see you. Um, as always, we're going to start with our uh, Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn Book. Um, we're going to be in uh, number 31. Number 31, He Lives. He Lives. Now, I'm not very good at singing this song. Um, I'll testify to that right now. <laughs> so I really need your help on this one. Um, I need you to imagine that it sounds good. Okay, anyway. But like I said last time, uh, all that really matters is we're praising the Lord Jesus. And we're here to praise Jesus' name. So whether it sounds good or not, um, it's a joyful noise to the Lord. So that's 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 really what we're focused on. Anyways, um, let's try to sing this one out. I'm going to try to do all three verses. Um, but anyway, sing with me. He lives. Number 31. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever man may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Verse 2, in all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him and help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is not dead. He's resurrected and he lives. And that's what we're talking about today. In today's video, um, we're in part three, I believe, of my Just a Closer Walk with Jesus series. And um, man, it's so good that uh, Jesus Christ is not dead. He lives. Anyways, um, we're going to begin with our opening verse in Acts chapter 26, if you want to read along in your King James Bible. Acts chapter 26, verse 12. Um... Good to see you. Let's read. Uh, the Bible says, Acts 26, verse 12, Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven above, the brightness of the sun shining round about, round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why, per why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, 
for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister with a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Praise God. Praise Jesus. The word of the Lord. Greetings, friends and colleagues. As I said, part three of our series today um, is going to be uh, is going to be focusing on. Well, let's go back. In part one, I talked about how uh, Jesus. There is no beginning or end to Jesus. He's eternal. He's everlasting. Then we went on to part two. Um, where I talked about uh, how the uh, Jesus and the apostles um, believed that the Old Testament prophesied of Jesus. And we looked at that, and now here in part three, we're going to talk about uh, Jesus' ascension into heaven, his resurrection, and how he's coming again, excuse me, and, and, and how we ought to act. And um, now that we know, we, we've been revealed, uh, Jesus Christ, that he's coming again. So how should we live our lives? Um, because we actually have something to look forward to, right? We have uh, eternal life in heaven and, and, uh, and the second coming of Jesus. Uh, the prophecies of the Old Testament um, didn't just leave us hanging. Uh, in the New Testament, we actually have another prophecy that he's going to come again in the future. In our opening reading, um, in Acts chapter 26, we read how Jesus first appeared to the Apostle Paul. Now, before Paul was an apostle, he was actually uh, somebody who was against Christians. He killed Christians. And, and, and Paul was um, on his way to Damascus uh, to actually persecute Christians and to, and to kill them. And then Jesus appeared to him. This is after Jesus has already resurrected. He had already ascended back into heaven. So he appeared to Paul here in, in his uh, new glorified state, if you will, his new glorified body. This was... I mean, uh, the Bible describes it as he was bright as the sun. Um, where does it say he was he, the brightness of the sun? That's how Paul described it, shining round about, right? Um, he saw this light from heaven. So Jesus came from heaven to visit Paul. And um, so I wanted to take a look at this and in Acts chapter 1. And I wanted to focus in on uh, where it says, uh, in verse 16, Jesus tells him he wanted him to make uh, to make thee a minister and a witness of both these things which thou hast seen. So Jesus called Paul to be a minister or a witness to people of, uh, of everything that Jesus had done. Why? Um, well, he tells us in the end, so, so that uh, they may have inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Or excuse me, in verse 18, he says that they may receive forgiveness of sins, which is in Jesus. So he wants Paul to minister to people, to witness to people, so that they can turn to Jesus, believe in him, and have forgiveness of sins. Now let's go to Acts chapter 1. Let me get my Bible. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. And um, after Jesus resurrected from the dead, he first appeared to Mary Magdalene. That was the first one uh, who he appeared to. And then he appeared to Peter. And then he appeared to all the rest of the apostles. And, and then he appears to, I think, over like 500 people. And, and we'll, look at, we'll look more into that um, next, uh, next time in part four. But for now, let's look at Acts chapter one. Just before Jesus ascends back into heaven... Um, so Jesus already died, right? He already had been dead for three days, three nights. He, he, his soul went to hell. He, he resurrected physically from the grave. And he appears to all kinds of people. And now, and now he's with his apostles just before he's going to ascend back into heaven. Now, he hasn't, he hasn't, uh, he hasn't appeared to Paul yet. That's, that comes later. Um, but he's just before he ascends into heaven, uh, um, 
he, he's with his apostles and he tells them something here. And I want you to look at Acts chapter 1 verse 6. When, uh, the Bible says, When they therefore were come together, he's talking about the apostles and Jesus, they asked him, asking Jesus, they said, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. So the apostles at this time, they thought, well, I guess it's it's the time is now to restore the kingdom of Israel. Jesus died, he resurrected. I mean, what's next? Obviously, restoring the kingdom of Israel is next. So they're going to uh, so they asked Jesus, are you going to do that right now? See, the apostles at this time, they believed that Jesus uh, might do it right now at that moment while they were living. Um but notice what Jesus says. He does, or notice what Jesus doesn't say. He doesn't say that they're wrong for um, guessing that, or for believing that that's going to happen. Of course, that's going to happen. He just said, "Not right now." Uh, you don't know what time that's going to happen or the season. And um, I forget where else in the Bible, but Jesus said he doesn't even know when the Father's going to send him back. Um, but remember when Jesus. Uh, remember when Jesus was arrested uh, by, um, uh, well, he was arrested by the Romans, right? And they were interrogating him. Pontius Pilate was interrogating him. And Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world, right? So the apostles are asking Jesus, hey, are you going to bring uh, your kingdom, the kingdom of heaven down here right now on earth and set up the, uh, you know, the, the new kingdom of Israel that's been prophesied about, which will happen in the future, Um because, but, you know, like I said, Jesus said, he said, uh, I don't know. I don't know when that's going to happen. And he said, and he tells them right here in verse, uh, verse seven, he said, it's not for you to know either <laughs> the times or the season, which the father hath put in his own power. Right? So it's not that it's not going to happen. It's just that you guys don't know when it's going to happen. It's not for us to know. Um, when Jesus is going to return, but he will return eventually. So if we know eventually that Jesus is going to set up his kingdom here on earth, we need to start preparing it for preparing for that, right? We need to start doing that right now. So let's keep reading. Uh, let's go to verse eight. Um, Acts chapter one, verse eight says, and this is Jesus's words. He says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Jesus said that they are going to, the apostles were going to receive power and they were going to be witnesses of him. Throughout the whole earth, not just in the, in the town that they were in, throughout the entire world. And you know, that's what we need to be doing right now as believers. We need to be witnesses. Jesus said, you need to be witnesses of me throughout the whole world. You need to bear witness of your faith in me. You need to bear witness of the things that I have done so that people can have forgiveness of sin so that they could turn to me and believe. Now, we in the new now the, back then the apostles were eyewitnesses they saw jesus uh physically resurrect from the dead they walked and talked with him that's what you would call eyewitness testimony but here in the new testament we are wit we are um witnesses as well even though we're not eyewitnesses we didn't exactly see it with our own eyes we didn't see jesus in the flesh but it doesn't mean we still can't be witnesses doesn't mean we still can't testify of the things that he that he's done and the things that we believe. So, what are some things that we can testify to um, as New Testament believers? You know, we can testify that we believe in Jesus, right? Amen. Uh, we could share our faith with people and say, "Hey, I believe the Bible. Let me tell you about what the Bible says. Let me tell you about the glorious things that Jesus has done." He's resurrected from the grave. Who else has done that? You know anybody else who's resurrected from the grave? I don't. Um, so let me. So let's testify to the resurrection of Jesus and the second coming of Jesus Christ. He's coming again. So we can be witnesses to other people that we believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let's look at verse 9. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. 
And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Verse 10, And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from uh, from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So Jesus just literally ascended into heaven before their eyes. And, and there's this angel. There's like this angel standing there before them saying, Hey, why are you guys just staring at the sky? Don't you know that Jesus is going to come back the same way? He's going to come back the same way that he uh, that he left them. So one day, Jesus is going to come back from the clouds uh, in a very similar way that uh, he ascended the first time. And um, so, but as he's gone, you know, uh, we know that Jesus is preparing a place for us. And our job right now is to be witnesses. Turn, if you will, to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. So if we're going to be witnesses for Jesus, we ought to be credible witnesses, right? Um, uh, you think of a courtroom, right, where you know you may be called up as a witness to testify to something. Um, what's the first thing that they're going to tell you to do as a witness in a courtroom? They're going to tell you, hey, what you need to do is tell the truth. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? And you say, yes, I do. Okay, so the last thing we want to be found as, a, as witnesses of Jesus is we, want, we don't want to be found liars. In fact, the ninth, com- the ninth commandment of the Bible says, Thou shalt not bear false witness. It's really important for us as witnesses to tell the truth. And it's the devil's job, or um, it's what, uh, maybe not his job, but um, it's his plan. The devil wants to uh, discredit us. Right, he wants to make us look um, not credible, like, or he wants to um, try to uh, convince everybody that we're liars, that we're uh, not to be trusted, that our witness is not true. He's good, and and sometimes he might even entice us to lie. Right now, why now? Why would um, the devil entice us to lie, or why why would we lie about something? Well, one thing the devil might do is he might bribe you, right? He might, uh, like, like he tried to bribe Jesus. He said, hey, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world if you just uh, tell a lie, right? And, or if you fall down and worship me. So the devil sometimes will uh, um, say, hey, you know, if you deny your faith, if you deny things that are in the Bible, if you live your way uh, this way, deny Jesus, stop living for God, I'll reward you with more friends, more money, more status. I'll give you all the things your flesh, your lust and your flesh desires. Or, you know, another way he might do it is the opposite. You know, he might blackmail us in a way, you know, meaning he might threaten us. Like, hey, if, if you stand up for Jesus, if you tell the truth, if you testify, I'm going to bring harm upon you. I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to have people make fun of you, persecute you, things like that. He's there. Um, even destroy our reputation, right? See, the devil's job is... Is he, he does not want us to testify to the truth of Jesus' resurrection, to the truth of Jesus' second coming, to um, faith in Jesus. You know, So being a witness can be a stressful thing, right? Because there are people, like the devil, who want to cover up the truth. They don't, they don't want you exposing the truth. The devil wants to cover up the fact that Jesus was resurrected from the dead, that he died for your sins, and that... Um, uh, salvation is through faith in Jesus. He doesn't want people to be saved. He doesn't want people to go to heaven. Let, now, um, let's look at uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Is that where I told you to turn? I hope so. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Um, anyway, uh, this verse is what I believe You know, is, is a good description of how we as uh, believers of Jesus are supposed to be good witnesses, you know, and... and, and and uh, how we can be better witnesses in our lives. Now, Jesus ascended into heaven, right? So 
And he told us to be witnesses, so it's our duty to be as good of witnesses as we can. Amen. So uh, let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, and we'll, and we'll look at verse 3. Uh, starting in verse 3, the Bible says, And I wrote the same unto you. Sorry, my, my Bible's ripped on that part. Let me see what my notes say. It says, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Oh, I was, oh, that's in chapter 2. Sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 3 says, or excuse me, verse 4. Sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. A lot of numbers. And, and it says, And such trust have we through Christ to, to God word. Not that we are sufficient to ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Is of God. He's saying here, look, we have trust in God, right? We have trust in God. Through faith, we trust God. We believe the Bible by faith. We know that it's true. Uh, we're confident in, in what we believe. We know what we know. We know Jesus resurrected, right? We know he's coming back from the dead. Uh, the truth is the truth, and the truth set us free. It says in verse 4, And such trust we have through Christ to God, right? So we have trust in God. We believe that. We trust God. We trust the Bible. And, and you know, we need to take that confidence or take that trust and, and not put it in ourselves, but, but give it to God. Like, look at verse 5. He says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. So our the glory goes to God, right? So anything that we do in our life, um, and 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 we're testifying it. Like if like if you were to, 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 if you were to testify to something that happened in your life that's so great, you would not give yourself the credit. You would not say, "Hey, look, I did this because I'm so smart or I'm so awesome." Right, you would say, "No, God did this. Look what God did for me." Right, that's that's what he's saying. Um, we need to take uh, the confidence and the trust that we have and give it to God. Give the glory to God. We're to show people that where our confidence comes from comes from God. Right, and and we're going to express uh, our faith um, that way by living a holy life. By living a holy, separated life, people are going to look at us and say, "Wow." You know, that person must really believe, you know, that, and that's how we're going to be witnesses to people. You know, if we live a holy life, people are going to look at us and say, wow, you know, that, and, and, and that person's not boasting about themselves. They're giving all the credit to God. Who is this God, right? Who is this Jesus? You see, you know, if we're going to be witnesses to people, uh, to witness our faith, you know, people can't necessarily see our faith. So they need to see our works, what we say, what we do. Uh, how we um, um, give glory to God and things like this. We want to make God look good, right? In other words, all that to say, you know, uh, we're not living our lives, our holy lives. We're not following the commandments of the Bible um, to make ourselves look good, right? We're, we're, we're doing that to give God glory so that God looks good as other people um, look at our lives so that um, God can get <laughs> God can get the glory, amen? Amen. Um, Remember, remember how I talked about how uh, a witness needs to be credible, right? A witness needs to be credible. Nobody's going to believe a, a, somebody who's lying, somebody who's a known liar. Um, oh, my camera just died. Oh, well. <laughs> I, I should have charged it. Oh, sorry. Um, nobody's going to believe you if you're a liar, right? Um what I'm getting at is, is if you're going to convince somebody who doesn't believe in Jesus to believe in Jesus, uh, to believe in the second coming of Jesus, that you're uh, you're going to have to be a credible witness, right? You're going to have to be somebody who's who's who who is known to tell the truth, right? Somebody who who's honest, who follows the commandments, right? See, because here's the thing: if you if you say that you believe in Jesus. But you don't follow Jesus' teachings, people might look at you and say, well, this person's not really credible, right? They say they believe in Jesus, but they don't follow the teachings of Jesus. Now, us as believers, we, we know that we believe in Jesus, right? We know that Jesus lives in our hearts. Um, we know that even, even though sometimes if we don't follow Jesus' teachings, 
that we're still a believer of Jesus, right? We know that. But other people who look at us, they can't see what's in our heart. They can't see our faith in Jesus. All they see is our actions. So people judge what we do as witnesses, what we say as witnesses. So if we want to be credible witnesses, we need to be careful of what we do and what we say. So we need to follow the teachings of Christ. Not so that we can go to heaven, okay? We go to heaven because of our faith, of what we believe in our heart. But if we want to be credible witnesses to other people and get them to believe in Jesus, we need to make sure our actions reflect what we believe in our heart. Amen? Now, because, uh, like I said, salvation is a free gift. We receive that through faith, not of works. But once we receive it, you know, nobody else is going to know you've received it, right? Only you and God know. That you've received Jesus Christ in your heart. So uh, we need to be witnesses. Uh, in order to be good witnesses, we that means we need to live holy lives. We need to follow the commandments and teachings of Jesus so that God can uh, ultimately get the glory. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, let's uh, go over to chapter 4 and let's look at verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. For which cause? We faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Well, we look not at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are are eternal. Look, the Bible's saying, hey, look, there's things that you can't see, right? You can't see what's in somebody's heart, like I talked about. But he's saying there's also something you can't see. You can't see the day or the hour that Jesus is coming back, right? But you got to look for that. You got to hope for that. That's where you're going to get your, um, your, uh, your motivation to do the right thing, to follow the commandments, you know, because uh, verse 17, he says, for our light affliction is but for a moment. See, right now in our lifetime, we're going to have affliction. You know, people are going to persecute us. They're going to try to discredit us. You know, the devil's going to attack us. But uh, <clears throat> it's just for a moment. He says, you got to foresee, you got to look to the future. You got to see what's coming. Eternal life's coming. Glory's coming. An eternal life in heaven with Jesus is on the way. So the Bible says that, you know, we shouldn't focus on the inward man. Okay. Uh, there's a differentiate, a differentiation, uh, in verse 16 here between the inward man and the outward man, right? The inward man is, is what's in our heart. You know, sometimes our heart wants to do, uh, knows, uh, something to do is right, but our outward man does something else, does the lust of the flesh or whatever, right? So um, we should be looking, our inward man should be looking for the eternal life with Christ, the second coming of Christ. That's what gives us our hope and our joy. Our, that's what sh uh, our focus should be on, is, is, the res is, is, is being resurrected one day, being brought back to life, eternal life with Jesus and the second coming of Christ. Um, Let's go, to, uh, let's go to chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verses 8. We're going to uh, look at that. It says, we are confident, and you could read, all, you could read this whole section here. I'm just, I'm just giving you some highlights here. Uh, but 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8 says, We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that, whether present or absent, we may be accepted, of him, for we we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, according to that which he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So we need to be confident witnesses. If we're going to be credible witnesses, we need to be confident. Okay, we need to not be wavering. Like I don't know, do I really believe the Bible? Like yes, you really believe the Bible. You need to be confident about that when you're telling people about the resurrection of Jesus, about the second coming of Jesus. You need to talk talk to them with confidence, right? Because we know the truth. So if you know the truth, you know what's in your heart. You believe it. You need to speak it with confidence. Now let's look at verse eleven. It says. 
Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also, excuse me, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Conscious, can't say that word, conscious, consciences. (laughs) Sorry, I can't speak. Um, But the Bible talks about persuading men, okay? It's, It's our job as a witness to persuade people to put their faith in Jesus. Now, here's the thing um, about being a witness is, is when you're sharing God's word with somebody, you know, you're 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 telling them the truth, and and you know they don't believe you, right? Let's say they don't believe you. You're 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 confident. You're 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 trying to persuade them, and they just say, "Nah, don't believe it." Don't take it personal, okay? Don't take it personal. Remember, your job as a witness. Is to just tell the truth, okay? Um, try to persuade them, right? Try to persuade them to accept the truth, but if they don't accept it, um, don't take it personal, right? Maybe, maybe they, maybe for whatever reason, the devil uh, blinded them and and made them say, "Oh, well, he's not credible," right? Maybe they need to just hear it from a different witness. Maybe they need to hear more testimony. Um, but whatever the case is, my point is, uh, don't take it personally, right? I mean, a lot of times we try to persuade people and persuade people, and when they don't get it, we we feel like we failed. But just don't do that, right? Your job as a witness is to just tell the truth in a way that persuades people to accept the truth, but don't take it personally um, when they don't. That's all I'm trying to say. Now, uh, Jesus did all the hard work. He fulfilled the whole law. He 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 was suffered and died on the cross, right? Innocent suffering, innocent. Uh, he was put to death, right? He went to hell. He paid for our sins. And then he resurrected from the grave. So Jesus did all the hard work, all the really hard work. You know, all he told us to do is just be witnesses. Just be witnesses to me. You know, he, he promised us, hey, I'm coming again, right? I, I'm, I'm building you a home in heaven. You have something to look forward to, okay? In the meantime, can you just be a good witness for me? Can you just tell the truth? Can you be confident in what you're saying, in what you believe? Can you do your best to persuade people to put their faith in me so that they can have forgiveness of, of sins, so that my 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 sacrifice didn't go in vain, right? Now, there's some people out there who may think, uh, well, you don't understand, Sean. I made so many bad decisions in my life. Uh, my credibility is shot, okay? Nobody's going to listen to me. I have no credibility. But let me tell you something. If you're a child of God, uh, you can be a witness. No matter how credible or how many bad decisions you made, you, you can be a good witness. Um, and, and let me tell you something that I've learned a long time ago. Um, and, and you never you, you can never say you failed unless you quit. Right. If you if you have if you haven't lived a holy life in the past, right, you made some bad, terrible decisions in the past, maybe ruined your life or whatever. Let me tell you something. Unless you quit, you haven't failed. You haven't failed at life. OK, maybe you're a man who hasn't been the most honest man in the past. Right. Or you've been selfish. You've been greedy or, you know, whatever decisions you've made um, in the past have been out of lust or, or whatever. Right. But my point is, unless you quit, unless you unless you quit trying to be good, right? You haven't failed. You have not failed. Maybe you're at the point now where you think, well, you know, nobody's going to take me seriously. Let me tell you something. Just don't give up. Don't quit. Because if you haven't quit yet, you haven't failed, okay? You can always get back, get back up on that horse and start making things right. Start making the right choices now. Just say, you know what? Yeah, you know, I've... I made some bad decisions in the past. Those were those were pretty dumb. Those were foolish. But at least I learned from them, okay? At least I learned from them. And you could testify to people to that. You could say, hey, the truth is, I did this. That was stupid, <laughs> okay? But I don't do that anymore. And, you know, they talk about that in the Bible. We won't look, we won't turn to those verses today. Um, but, I mean, think about it, right? D- Jesus died. He, he died, and people said, no, there's no way he's coming back. He's dead. Even the apostles themselves thought, this is it. This is the end. <laughs> and then he resurrected back to life, right? And he said, 
look what I did. And not only that, I'm coming back, right? So um, he lives, amen? Jesus Christ lives. Uh, and he's coming back. He's coming again. Uh, so friends, we have something to look forward to. And so no matter where you're at in your life, you have something to look forward to in your life. You have something to get excited about and say, hey, look, I, I screwed up in the past, but I have something to look forward to in the future, right? I can, I, can, I can change my life around. I can start making the right decisions, start telling the truth, start living for Jesus, start being a good witness. Amen? So uh, stop looking forward to Christmas. <laughs> I mean, I agree. I agree. I agree. Christmas is nice to look forward to. I'm looking forward to it myself. Now, I'm not saying don't get excited about Christmas, but what I'm saying is we have something so much more exciting to get to get excited about is, is the second coming of Jesus, eternal life in heaven with Jesus. And there's people out there who have, who don't have this hope. They don't have this hope in their heart. So we need to show them that we need to be good witnesses and tell them, Hey, you have something to look forward to. Jesus Christ said he came back from the dead. He said, I'm coming back. I go to prepare a place before you. Right. And I'm coming back. He is going to restore his, uh, his kingdom here on earth. We don't know when, we don't know the time or the season, but he is going to do it. And friends, um, that's basically my message for the day. You know, um, let's ha let's put our hope in the second coming of Jesus. You know, the resurrection, a new body, you know, a perfect, sinless, glorified body like Jesus came back and he appeared before Paul when they were going to have a glorified body. You know, Jesus Christ, our Savior, before he left uh, this earth and ascended back into heaven, he called us to be witnesses of him, right? Mark chapter 16, verse 15, you don't have to turn there, but it says, before Jesus, uh, this is before Jesus ascends in, into heaven, he told his apostles something. He said, in verse 15, he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He wants us to preach. He wants us to be witnesses. Okay? Why? Because he's coming again. Because he's coming again and he wants everybody to have hope. He wants us, he doesn't want us to go through life uh, having no hope, right? We have hope of eternal life. We have hope in the second coming of Jesus. Therefore, you know, we shouldn't give up. Maybe we made some bad decisions in the past, but, you know, don't give up. Don't quit. And you haven't failed. You know, every day uh, I fall short of the glory of God. We all do, you know. We all would, would love to be better witnesses, um, sometimes we, we come up short, but just keep getting up, you know, keep pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, we can be the most holy person that we can be so that we can be the most credible person that we can be as witnesses to give God the glory. You know, if you've made poor decisions in the past, you know, just forget about it. Turn away from it. Forsake it. Tell the truth now. Tell the truth now about it. Be a credible witness from this point forward. You know, if God, if God is a past you from death to life, if you've trusted in Jesus Christ as your savior, tell the truth about it. Tell your friends, your family, everybody you meet, show them the hope that you have in your heart. You know, if you believe Jesus Christ is coming again, tell the truth about it. Amen? If uh, Nobody can take away your credibility if you're honest. Okay? If you just tell the truth, that's what a good witness does. So let's just go out there. Let's be good witnesses for Jesus as he commanded. And that's my message for the day, guys. You know, God bless you. God bless this message. And, uh, Go out there and be a good witness. Let's do it um, in Jesus' name. So we're going to close in prayer. And then, uh, as always, I'm going to give God the last word. And I think uh, we're going to be reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Anyway, you guys have a great day in Jesus. My camera died, so this pro I don't know how I'm going to get it on YouTube. I'll figure it out. Anyway, God bless you guys. Have a great day. Let's bow in prayer, and then we'll give God the last word. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you so much for this message. Uh, thank you for giving us hope, Lord. Um, thank you for Jesus himself. Thank you for sacrificing your only son uh, so that we might have life, Lord. I, I, I just thank you for giving us that promise of everlasting life. And 
not making it by works, Lord. No, none of us would have been, would make it if uh, if it was by our own good deeds, Lord. Uh, but it's all by faith in in Your Son and that He died for us. I I thank You for that, Lord. I can't fully compre- comprehend uh, how or Your second coming is going to be, um, Lord. No man knows the day or the hour or exactly how it's going to happen. Um, but Lord, I ask that uh, when You do come back, that You find us faithful. You find us uh, praying and and being good witnesses for you, Lord, and I pray that you help us put off the old man and the old ways of being greedy and selfish, and help us love love one another, Lord, and follow your teachings so that uh, people will give you the glory, Lord. Lord, help us be uh, credible witnesses to you and for those of us uh, around us. Lord, I ask that you help them see our faith. And not just our actions, but what's in our heart. Lord, uh, I ask that you bless this message. Give the listener who hears this message a reminder that uh, they have hope that you're going to come back, Lord, and put it in the forefront of their minds in this uh, holiday season that uh, that's what we should get most excited about, um, is one day being uh, being with you, Lord, and, and seeing you, being in your presence. But uh, until then, Lord... Um, Please move in our lives in a way that will help us be better witnesses, perfect witnesses to uh, turn people to Lord, uh, turn people to you and uh, and to believe in you. Um, I love you, Lord. Thank you for all that you do. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Uh, Our closing reading is first Thessalonians chapter four, I believe. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 13 through 18. God bless you guys. Thanks for listening. Have a great day in Jesus. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. God bless.